everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, Selectman's meeting, the Town Aware, for the 29th of June, 2020. Would everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight's meeting is scheduled for a public hearing from the here testimony from the uh, public regarding additional fees for walk-ins at Chase Park and for also for uh, a facility use fee for the town. Um, uh, fields and facilities uh, such as the gazebo, Inneson Field, Purrington Field, and Bolton Field. Um, we'll uh, first hear from Janine, and as the was it the uh, chairman of the Parks and Rec Committee. Hello, everybody. Hello. First, I'd like um, Lisa sends her apologies for not making it. The coordinator, she's at a funeral, an immediate. Can I just ask you? You pull that thing back to the circle. It has its own circle. <laughs> Social distance microphone. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. So you might have to speak up a little bit. It's a little further away. All right. So what I have printed out for right now is current fees and proposed fees, really. And I might as well give you the field usage so I don't have to walk around huh. again. So the first one is the current one, and then the proposed one has more writing at the top. <laughs> I didn't I didn't date them. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody has, everybody should have three more. Mm -hmm. If I can count right. So as a board, we propose to increase um, non-resident fees for par car parking and boat ramp access to $50, either, either one, whether they come in a car, whether they come in a, a boat. Um, most of the reasoning behind this is due to capacity even before we had to deal with 50 percent limited capacity it was a lot of resident feedback about can i just coming. stop yeah. Um, yeah that's not what was noticed okay yeah. just um what was noticed was adding fees for walk-ins and adding the facility use fee i know that you guys met in between and i think the additional fee that you're talking about is a result of your meeting right right but that's not what was noticed for the public all right hearing. so we do another we'd have to do another okay. public hearing. okay yeah. okay so um all right so the um the walk-ins were discussed um which was two dollars per person um, for resident walk-ins um, and that fee would be waived if they had proof of a a pass purchase. So I mean, if it's a local down the street, they already own their season pass, but they just want to walk to the lake. We're not going to charge them again. Um, and then um, we were going to do not walk, no walk-ins allowed for non-residents. So we could take care of not having capacity on that, on the amount of walk-ins, since walk-ins are limited to 10 people currently a day. So that's what we proposed as far as the walk-ins go.
So no walk-ins for non-residents and two dollars for residents then? Correct. Okay. Which can be waived if they already have a pass. Okay. And how are you going to have proof of pass? Well, we have the record book. We have the record book where it's denoted, so it's a bit of the honor system with the name and the address. I know, right? Well. It's, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's an idea. I'm, I'm more than willing to hear other, oh, other ideas. It's all up for negotiation. How is the, how are you guys determining non-resident? What is the definition yeah. for parks? So if they can show us a current car registration, current, being the operative word, showing that they live and where, drive, valid driver's license, a rental agreement, as if they're renting an apartment and they're residing in where, a tax bill, in case they haven't changed the, um, if they're campground, they'll have a tax bill, and then a utility bill if they've just moved here and nothing's been updated other than maybe they've gotten a utility bill. So something to show. Residency. Okay. Now the two dollar walk in fee for residents, is that for all ages from Yes. Per person, senior, veteran, anything, just two dollars a headcount. How, how about like under minors? We yeah, we weren't gonna try to complicate it with an, an age okay. bracket. I would assume if, if they're not walking on their own feet. You know, oh, I'm saying if you get somebody that's like 10, 10 12 years old, yep, two dollars comes up and uh, it's two dollars for them, yeah. Okay, anybody else? If it's a parent with a stroller, no, no charge because you said walking, yeah. That's, I mean, well, it is. Uh, I think that's cutting it a little close. What if they were riding their bike? Okay, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's a walk in, I mean, they're not. Not the at, at, at this point, it would be it would be two dollars a head and two dollars a person. Okay. Um, just to be fair, all across the board. Okay. That way, bicycles, <coughs> skateboard, wheelchair, stroller. Unicycle. Yeah. <laughs> unicycle. Yeah. Unicycle. Um, I might be free just for the ability to ride a unicycle. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, any other questions from the board? Well, I guess we'll open it up to the public then. Whoever wants to speak first, Tom. I'll only take a second because I think you've already addressed the concern that I had, mm -hmm. uh, and that is that if somebody was a resident and they had already paid, then uh, they should not be charged a walk-in fee. The other thing is, uh, when you met before, it was tossed around two dollars or five dollars. And, you know, $2, if a kid goes up on his bike, that's the cost of a soda nowadays, so I, that's no big deal. If you were going to go to 5 and that's not even on the table now, then, uh, then I would be speaking against it. So I, I think that uh, $2 for a walk-in and try to identify those people who have already paid a parking fee is fair. Okay. Anyone else? Um, just a question for the board. Uh, what do they feel about run no no walk-ins for non-residents in general? So I brought that up, but that was in relation to another topic that we're not discussing this evening. Yeah. Okay, but I'm just saying that that's still on the table as a non-resident, no walk-in. So nobody has any problems with that. I have no issues with that. I have no issues with that. I just want to make sure that when we def defined non-resident how, right. how we defined it that's it because we um, have we have people who don't live here year-round but have own property uh, like at this the uh, seasonal sites that if they all, yeah. you know at all seasons and uh, yeah, uh, sounds like springs, if, if, springs they, springs if they can so show proof of they pay they some need. kind of property tax then right then yeah. they're covered as a resident right. yep. it's at the bottom of the fee schedule right. <clears throat> what considers residents okay. well, I just want to make sure that that was out no, there absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that was my biggest question was was mm -hmm. how, how we identifying them that's all okay. very big question yep um any other questions or comments if not then uh, i will close the public well i'll close the public hearing on the park but now we'll go to the town usage fee
Should I wait for everybody to finish reading? What's that? <laughs> should, I, should I wait for everybody to finish reading? No, go right in. So um, this was something new. Um, we're, we're associating it with a lot of fields and schools not being open that we're seeing a little bit more, not lately, but the past month, uptick on inquiries about using our fields from outside organizations that may or may not have anywhere residents on, may charge much larger prices for profit. And so we're like, well, how do we address this? We can't let you know, so much ma maintenance being needed to these teams that aren't contributing to their, it's not their home field. Um, so we looked at the surrounding communities. I contact, I reached out to um, Bo, I reached out to Hopkinton, I reached out to Goffstown, and then I did research as far as Henniker. I didn't hear back from Bo or Hopkinton, but I, I heard back from um, Goffstown, and then on Henniker, they state their fees. And Henniker, we currently, Share field time, we have had cooperative in the older grade, seven, eight girls. My daughter last year in seven, eight grade uh, boys last year. They, sh they actually had teams with Henniker, so we used each other's fields. So um, I think our field usage is very similar to Henniker as far as um, expectations and um, versus Gosstown having lights and year-round maintenance and, and an actual staff. So not as much compared. So um, we prepar proposed <clears throat> town of wear, town field usage fees, field usage fees for Bolton Memorial Field, Ineson Memorial Field, Purrington Mer Memorial Field, and Gazebo Field to contribute to the field maintenance. The Ware Park and Recreation Commission will be responsible for assigning the usage of fields with the highest priority given to Ware youth and adult residents. All applicants must fill out a facility use form and improve, include proof of insurance to be approved by the Park and Recreation Committee. That's not new, that's pre existing. Fees are waived for the Wear Athletic Club. They already really contribute a lot to the maintenance of the fields. They do sod, they do damage repair. If there's, we've had a vehicle drive through Ineson Field and tear it up and they were fixing it all, they already drake it, they rake and drag it after every game and they already contribute quite a bit. Um, and then um, Park and Recreation Commission reserves the right to a fee for other qualifying groups and organizations as well. For example, there's a small church group that is, you know, they get together for a few games and there's also once in a while a few adult pickup games, things like that where there's no money being charged. Um, so the fees would be as followed, $150 for a full day or $150 per team for one season. And then our contact information to get a hold of Parks and Rec. Jack, can I raise a point here? Yep. No. 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 That's been dropped. No, I think they, they enlarged it. Huh? Yeah, we're, no we're no longer at 10. The governor's dropped. Well, we could still get the six feet, but you could still spread out enough. And this is the open seats over there. Um, any comment on what she's presented? No, I think I think it represents well. I think you know again, I, it's it's an outside agent. It's not non-town um, related entities for the majority that are utilizing the field. And again, we've got other clubs in town that you know put their extra foot forward to really maintain it and keep them up. And well, I, the only thing I have is like it's one hundred and fifty dollars per day. That, that's no problem. I mean, whereas what Gosstown gets a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, or you do. get some of the others that get, you know, close to uh, three or four hundred, and you know. But the only thing I don't like is $150 per team per season. So now you've locked them into a whole season. Seems and if low. It's, it's an out of town team. It's out of town, I yeah. Um, so you're kind of going to slight uh, our own teams. And I talked to somebody from uh, Wear Athletic the other night, and I mean, they had to go to Hillsboro. They know our fields are closed, but I mean, plus our fields weren't regulation for for what they had to our do. Our fields aren't closed. No, I mean, as far as for them to use it, it's not. Well, at the time, it was closed when okay. they went to do it because. Right. No, but as far as regulation, and I it's not regulation, it's so the they oh, it's for the a game. Okay. So, um, I was say, we got baseball. But I mean, <laughs> that's the thing. So I mean, but the, we got to kind of contribute to them, them first, the other ones. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so I think $150 per team for the season kind of locks us into a, an out-of-town team to come in. Get off too easily. Yeah. I mean, we're still doing the maintenance. we still got to take right. care of the watering. we still got to take care of any electricity or anything else that they use or clean up. So I, I think, think 50 that, seems low. 
that for seems seasons. an awful low for the season. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I do think the hundred and fifty dollars per day is is reasonable. Um, question: th This, for a better term, revenue um, general fund. It goes to the general fund. Yeah. Do you have a maintenance line for the fields? We do. Just just for field yeah. maintenance. It's just maintenance. It's just maintenance. Okay. Right. Which is pretty much fields. Well, I mean Chase Park, I guess, would also fall into. So if so. if say Stockhouse were to come down and do and re make a repair, it comes. It, that's obviously their contract to the mow and do a certain amount. But that extra above and beyond would come out of that maintenance line, correct? Right. Well, I'll open it up to anybody in the public. Okay, Tom. I I agree with some of the concerns that Sherry uh, expressed at the last meeting, and that is that uh, we're already cramped as far as the where athletic club every year they ask for uh, something that would provide them with more space, and uh, so I don't see any reason to open it to outside groups at all. Uh, certainly not for a season, uh, you know, a team for a season, that would tie it up. But, I mean, I, I think you just say, no, we're crowded. Uh, we don't have uh, the facilities to rent out to anybody. Uh, and then, I, you know, uh, I'm afraid you might set a precedent and then you run into conflicts you have to solve later. So I would uh, recommend, my personal opinion would be, just don't rent it out at all, but uh, keep it for locals because they're already overcrowded and asking, you know, they have every year. Last year there was a, uh, they were looking for ex extension uh, up to Ineson Field and that didn't pass voters. So I think to start putting it out to uh, outside groups would, uh, would send a mixed message. Uh, basically, that's what I had to say. Now, it, it said something about the money here going into field maintenance, but in fact, I think so Naomi already said it has to just go into the general fund. General fund. General fund. The same as. Right, more of the purpose know. behind collecting, like more of the reasoning behind the collecting mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Janine? To address that comment, um, the only time we would consider an outside um, team coming in for would be when when there was a complete and total opening obviously with priority given to the where youth and where adults they would always be first so it was only even considered which of course it was denied in both cases it was asked during the summer none of the fields are being used the the, the it had ended all all the soccer um, would start in the fall and baseball and softball would be done in the spring. So that was the only reason it was even considered at that time was there was a complete vacancy. So it was the only reason we even, I think, were asked and considered the fee. Thank you. Um, do you have a estimated, I'll say esti best guesstimate of the dates when the youth and adult um, residents are utilizing the fields as far as like say they start in August to whatever? Yep, pretty pretty much so, um, soccer pretty much coincides with school, maybe a week before school starts, so that last week or two of August. And then um, and it goes Columbus Day, unless there's um, mm -hmm. championships and a little bit further. And then um, softball, as soon as the fields are ready, late yeah, they were, March, April, they, and they start practicing the, inside the schools. They were going out for tryouts in one of the fields, yeah. and it, it was the snow was just barely off the ground. Right. I mean, it's still right. Wet. But usually, and then it ends when school pretty much. Right. Ends. So basically, it's it's say mid June to mid August. Right. Yeah. Right. Is there a thought about putting a provision in to um, only allow outside teams or users to be in that month of time, so that there's no scheduling conflict? Um, because we, you know, uh, somebody could call ahead that's out of town and say, "I want the field for um, September, you know, 19th or whatever." And then next thing you know, um, you know, because of a rain hour or something like that, the athletic club needs it. Well, I've already got it scheduled, and it's mine now. Blah blah blah. So I was thinking, if if just if we if we could limit it down to the mid June to mid August, these are the times that you may be able to use it, 
But again, that would kind of go back to Tom's point of no conflict during yeah. when the well, warehouse users want to use we're, it. We're given 95% of our field usage forms are submitted in March for mm -hmm. the whole year. Yeah. So we tentatively know. And typically, a field is booked Monday through Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, all day to all night. Because they want to have that availability that if, if there's rain or if they need to swap around, because especially with WAC, there's so many teams that they want right. to have that mobility. Well, I'm just thinking so that there could that be a conflict. Work. There could be a conflict if that were to occur. Right. There was a, a rearrangement because of a rain date or something like that. Right. And somebody, right. an outside person, already because at the time we didn't have anything on. It. Right. Yeah, I think you know, you've got other competing groups for the field. You have lacrosse, which is WAC. Yep. But the yep. lacrosse shares with a football. Yep. And then you also have field hockey now that is Field hockey looked elsewhere. They didn't put any field usage requests with okay, us. Okay, but that may not That may change at some point. Right, right, right. You know, field hockey happens about the same time soccer does. Mm -hmm. So. Um, well, I mean, I think the biggest thing, too, is to clarify this for everybody out there, is that what precipitated this is we started getting requests recently because of all the fields being shut down in other towns. So that's, that's why people were looking to do things. We might never get asked again. We, yeah, that's <laughs> the other possibility. True. But True. I think that that's the biggest thing is to make sure we take care of our, the home teams first and then everybody else can. And that's why I was kind of putting that, you know, time clause in there. Yeah. So... Or just put in when uh, you know whenever available per packs and rack. Because, well, it, it's it, because it, if you lock yourself into that time time frame and then things change that they want to, some of these teams want to start using it in June, July. Oh, okay. then then we've got to go back, but you've already got it written down. Well, so it's, I mean, it would still be written in there that the where youth and adult residents get first priority over it, but over. but at that point it closes the door for when yeah. you know sports are in their peak. Right. And that's kind of what I wanted. I would want to do it would be to close that close that opportunity window when we know it's going to be a, at their peak use. True. Anybody else? I, I'm just going to say I think that the, the 150 per team for the season that should be taken off. Yep. I think that's pretty much agreed. Yeah. Okay. Um, Part of this also, um, yeah, it's, uh, this will be added to a use, use, uh, yeah, use facil facility use form. Okay, and like I said, putting the, the the times that would not conflict. There will be no conflicts with any of the town teams. Other than that, I don't see any other any other thing. Well, John, I mean, are we in support? But I think I John. If you're do what? You still think it should be closed? I'm not in favor of it. You're not in favor. Okay, well, we've got to go to a vote. Yes, we have one more. I'm not really in favor of it, but I, I, I do agree with Ricky. If, if this yep. passes, it should be. Well, we got to vote on it, so we'll vote on it here in a minute. Just a question. I know the local teams all are indemnified and insured. Um, and we're familiar with that. If we were having outside teams come in to use our fields, is there some form of liability? We yes, have? it's on. You don't have a copy of it. It says they will yeah. provide uh, proof of insurance to be approved that. by the Parks and Rec. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Okay. I will close the public hearing at this time, and I guess we will put these two items to a vote of the board. On the first item, on Chase Park, on the uh, walk-in fees for residents and for not allowing non-residents, um, I make a motion uh, to um, go with the $2 walk-in fees for residents to be waived if they have proof, proof of residency, um, as stated by the Chairman of the Parks and Recs. No, it's proof of they per proof of pa past. past purchase season pass. Yeah, proof of residency and pass, uh, yeah, pass uh, season pass. <coughs> I'm sorry, and uh, but that also goes hand in hand with the residency mm -hmm. and uh, not allowing any walk-ins that are non-residents. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Are you going to are you going to put the the um, rates in there for the non-residents as far as the per car and per No, vote. we didn't have that listed on the public hearing, so we can't discuss that. So okay. it has to have a separate hearing on that. Okay. So all those in favor of that? Aye. 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 
Any opposed? Okay, that one's done. Was that starting immediately this weekend? Yes. I would. Uh, yeah. Wednesday, if we could, unless you want to wait. Wednesday? Okay. Wednesday. 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 Yep. Be um, July. That'll July. be effective July 1. Effective July 1. I'll make that part of the motion. Okay, the second one is for town usage fees for the town fields. That includes uh, Bolton Memorial, Ineson Memorial, um, Purrington Memorial, and Gazebo Field. Um, the proposal is for the Parks and Rec is that they have, uh, for any non-town um, organization to uh, use the field, it would be $150 per day, and included with that, they have to fill out the facility use form and include proof of insurance to be approved by the Parks and Rec Committee. Um, do I have a second on that? Second. What was your motion? Yeah, I guess it was con convoluted. That uh, the town usage fees that would go to $150 per day for non-town uh, organizations, and that they prove have proof of insurance. And second. Yep. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. 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 Okay. Then those have it. So, does that mean that you don't agree with the fee or know that you don't want to allow them? So you'll have to make So they could still allow it now allow without, without a, fee. a fee. You want a second motion? You're going to have to make the motion. I, I made the first motion. I, I, I figured we would what get the money. <laughs> so, uh, move to allow, to not allow any outside um, town of where. Uh, organization to utilize the fields um, um, in the town of where all those in favor aye, aye. no uh, no so the motion carries That's the paperwork for me. okay <laughs> so I don't know if this is something to bring up later it's probably too late oh wait a minute the percentage of residents when we say out of town like if there's a few wear players and sometimes it's mixed 50 percent well if it's a town if it's whack sometimes they have people from henneke that are involved yeah. on right. the team if it's, so. the if it's yeah. facilitated by the wear facilitated by whack or a wear yeah. organization yeah yeah it's good right before we move on um is it possible that we have another public meet hearing prior to this weekend to discuss the non-resident fees not legally. No, Not can't do it legally. You have, have ten, you have to have two oh, weeks. Oh, it's 10 days? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Actually, days. I say 14 because you can't include the weekend. Yeah. Got it. Okay. It's 10. So. 10 working days. Right. I'd yep. like to at least get that ball rolling. Get that ball rolling, please. Yep. Can we discuss that a little bit? Well, I think before we go, yeah, you're right. Now the public hearing's closed. I think we have some other things to discuss as far as that goes. This is what the topic is for tonight. So. If that's me. It's why I think it is. It could be pushing discriminatory. Yep. So we know we have to be open to residents. Um, and it's more the feedback of the public that are already paying taxes towards Chase Park um, that um, we're being capacity at 10, 10 a.m. And they're being turned around, and it, and and I realize some of that is due to the current time with our limited capacity, but even years before. So it's just the hearing, the feedback of I tried to go to the lake and I got turned around. I tried to go to the lake and I turned. Around. I pay for the lake. I sit there and I look at you know the out of town plates and, and so also looking at the, what we've done in the past, comparing to um, Clough State Park being in Ware and being the same price for everybody. Um, a family of four, it's still cheaper to go um, to Clough State Park. It's cheaper than uh, Chase. No, Chase Park. Sorry. Chase Park is cheaper. cheaper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry. We're cheaper for um, four people in the car. Uh, five, it's maybe a dollar or two. Then you get up to six. So really, we're that option if they're going to save a few bucks and they're from out of town. We're that option. We're, and Ch Clough is a much larger facility um, to handle more uh, people so that that's that's our the reason 
I, I, I kind of look at it in a way the same way you do, John. It could be like, yeah. to say it, not a snob, uh, a snob ordinance, you know, to charge. But I also understand, on the other half, I don't want to, we're starting to see an influx of certain people coming from certain areas that we used to see in the south end of town when that lake was open all the time. I think it kind of, yeah. And I don't want to see uh, Well, do you think it's problem. because of the current, your pools aren't open? Right, the city your, pools aren't open. Your campground pools Manchester aren't open. Manchester just opened right. one sla splash pad, one pool, yep. and one, but only of, Manchester residents only. Yeah, and then out, of how, and, out of how many pools and right. so forth. One so, lake's I mean, been resident only right. aside from both. And they've closed some of their... And we felt a big difference with Glen Lake. They've closed some of their lakes, so I mean... I think part of it might be what we're dealing with today. Yep, that's what I'm you saying. Know, when you when you used to have um, a pool, and done at Cold Springs, I know Cold Springs advertised that you can go to Horse Lake. Yep. Right. So when you have, yeah, you know, plus and Autumn Hills, they go. They no place to go get And wet. Autumn Hills sends them to. Uh, to um, I think to that, that I think we're just living part of it. Um, I know I don't have a vote, but I certainly would be. Yeah, but I, I feel as we've That's we've been crossing this bridge for more than just the COVID times. Yeah. Um, it's, I've it's, been it's, here it's, before. <laughs> it, like I say, I mean, you know, a couple years ago. Before, yeah, and, I mean, years. not for nothing, we did put a, there was a, there was a warrant article or, or a petition article that came out about it. So it's not like this is, you know, new news. It's new news. maybe, maybe more. Um, pressing. Pressing now because of mm -hmm. what you're saying. Yep. But, but I don't think this is old news. I think, I think no. this is a, this has been an ongoing well, issue. I can remember all my you know. Yep. And my understanding is the petition article could not be enforced. One, it's advisory anyway. But two is, I guess the deed is so open to the public. The where public. The public of where. The public yes. of where. So, so if you're visiting where that day, you're the public of where. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So. And, and we're not. And and we're not closing it off. No. No. But the, you know, I think before we went twenty dollars, it was the non-resident fee per car, and now it's more than doubled. Um, you know, all of the, with this increase, um, you know, the boats, the boat, the boat access only went up five, five, five bucks, yep. but to go up $30 for a car, I mean, that's, that's a little steep of an increase right off the bat. We aim high, maybe we get close. No, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> there's negotiation. Yeah, right? that's what I'm saying. It's, what are they charging down at Buff State? Well, so it's whether you're an adult or whether you're a child. Um, so yeah. it's what all is ahead. It depends on which you know. And then other state parks. The Clough State they're the Park. They're one of the cheapest ones. You're two dollars if you're under the age of eleven or under, and you're four dollars over twelve. That's I'm not plus. sure. Greenfield and Sunapee. They're doing, and you have to have a reservation. Now you have to have online reservations. That's yes. not typical, but yes, right yeah. now. And yeah. right now they're, they're doing, reaching capacity, too. They're doing 50% capacity, and you you don't get in unless you have an online reservation. You pay so ahead of time. and A car of four would technically be, uh, let's see if we did, um, $14. 16. 16. Um, yeah, for a four over the age of 12. And then, um, and then once you get to 5, 18, and then... Depends, you know, the number of if it's kids or versus adults, how many are in the car. And I think if you go to some place like Sunapee that has a boat ramp, if you went there in regular times, it's more money than that, because you get access to they have um, regular facilities. Plus they had a store. Plus then you have the boat ramp, and when you pay to go in, you well, you're paying more to go to that. So it's only the non-residents when you're looking to go to 50 bucks. Yes, the, the, yeah, the residents already have. Honestly, I don't think that the yes. that the boat ramp access raises. Uh, oh, unreasonable. I don't think it's unreasonable at all. No, I think that, to I think that makes it even even number. I mean, I've been the I take my boat places, and I know this. You go to boat ramps, and you pay more than that to go to the use the boat ramp to put your boat in. Um, then the sum that you don't pay any. Depends on where you go, whether it's a town boat ramp or it's a state. If it's a state-run boat ramp, that you know, like fishing game, it's for instance. Uh, when did we Mount put Williams. the twenty dollars into effect? It was last, last year. Last year, and it, it went from ten to twenty. Ten to twenty. 
I guess I'd be in support of 20 to 30. Was that? I was going to say 40, but yeah. yeah. I like 40. You know, to easy, double it, easy numbers. Easy to double numbers. it, I mean, isn't I don't yeah. think it'd be unreasonable. Well, but we, uh, we doubled it last time. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now is that forty per car and boat, or no. for just yeah. car? forty per car, fifty 40 per, per boat. car, and then forty per forty forty five per no, boat, fifty, per, uh, boat. 50 yeah. per boat. Right, the boat, the car is included if it has a boat in tow. Yep. Which I have that under resident. I could also repeat that down under non-resident. You know, we still I, need I, a public hearing if it doesn't affect the town residents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we still have to have a public hearing. Yeah, so even if it doesn't affect yep. the town residents. Okay. Um, I guess I guess my thought is is the fact that you know Clough State Park is is state run. Um, and they don't yeah. have a boat ramp. <laughs> well, they don't have a boat, but but I'm, I'm rolling back to the fact that that you know the, yeah. the state pays for the maintenance of that. The the town taxpayers pay for the maintenance of Chase Park. So, um, I, yeah. I I could see I could see Clough being a little bit less, um, but I but I think that again where where the, you know the the town residents taxpayers whatever you want to call them. Um, Pay the bill for for all the maintenance that goes along with the foot traffic up there, um, and you know again, Clough State Park has a huge parking lot down there. Yep. Um, you know we've talked many times here about the parking uh, situations up there on the side of Reservoir. Um, I I'm I'm in support of raising it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, even though we're not really having a public hearing on it, I, we have some of the public here. So um, is anybody out in the public here have any comment reference the fees for that for the boats and the non-resident boats and cars. I guess it's a no. Guess so, it's what are no. You, so what are you thinking about? I don't want to post something that's... Well, if another public hearing... And right, I know, but for what? For $50 for the boat, but what you going to do with the car? Um, yeah, I, think I don't know. I think... We didn't talk about a number yet. We didn't talk about for a number, but it's, I'd say 40 I'd double it. It'd be more reasonable, I think, than going to... I mean, you put you put four adults in a car and ten bucks a head. That's to me. That's that's cheap for the day. Yeah, it's easier to get two twenties out of an ATM. Yeah. Yep. I would. That's it. Yeah. yeah it, hey, he, he's spot on. Yep. So I I'd be in support of the forty. John. I know you you don't want any non-residents. So. <laughs> No, 50, 50 was a little steep. 50 is a little steep. But 40, I'd say, would be more yeah. reasonable. Sherry? Same. Same. I think 40, okay. I think 40 is fine. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're looking at is 40. Yeah. So you probably won't be able to do that, though, until a couple weeks. 20th is your next meeting. Yep. Because of the holiday, you aren't going to get it in the paper because okay. they're closed. Okay, so the 20th? Not have to it on the 4th yeah, so okay, the 20th. We'll schedule it for the 20th. Yep. Is that our next meeting? No, next week is our next meeting. Is this an off week? Yeah, this was actually yeah. an off week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was five. There was five in June. Five months. Oh. Yeah, we met last week. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't remember. <laughs> Time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. What else at the park now that we've done done that? Um. With, with those with the fresh um, manifest, we don't have a manifest. Yeah, we do, yeah, but we still have more. Stuff. Oh no, I know we do. I just didn't know if we had a manifest. It didn't show it on the agenda. That's all. Oh yeah, I got I just it here. Did correspondence and other business. Yeah. Um, I'll call I it. I believe other business. there was one other thing under park. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know there's been some stuff going on, so I uh, figured we might as well. Well, no, we received uh, an email regarding a lifeguard position. Right. Can I think you? that has to be closed session. Yep. Um, the other thing is, is the signs. While well, you're here, have the signs been put up yet? The no parking no. signs. They haven't. No, they. Uh, John they haven't come yet. No, John and I had a conversation this afternoon. I talked to Benji. Yep. The signs are in. They get delivered Friday afternoon. Yep. Um, Benji couldn't promise me they would be up because a, this is a short week, and b, he's got a short crew because of the short week. People yep. take vacation this week. I'll know more tomorrow morning, okay. but well, I short. can't. I can't really guarantee because everybody's closed on Friday. Right. I mean, I'll okay. talk to him again, but 
Yeah. We'll do our best. And and requ requesting PD to assist with that. Yeah, he's already had that conversation. <clears throat> okay. It's got to be a coordinated group. I understand we've had some more issues up there. Can you can fill us in on that. So that was one of the things that we wanted to make sure that I'd sent into one of my emails that we want to make sure that that um, the board and the director has um, the right to ask guests to leave the park if they're breaking the rules is one of the big concerns we're having. Um, so I don't know how much detail we want about Friday night. Is that what everybody? We can't oh. use names. Right, no, correct. That's... I didn't write any down. So what rules were being broken? When time the boat ramp closes, which there is upon entry right behind the gatehouse, a sandwich board that stands about this high, black and white lettering, a little bit of red, that the park closes at 8 and the boat ramp closes at 7.30. And we had two guests that chose to stay after 7.30, very close to the boat ramp area in sight and when our staff of minors um at the time 14 and 17 year olds i believe you can correct me if i'm wrong okay um tried to enforce that the boat ramp gate needs to be closed it's now 7 30. one guest got hostile um to the point of being disrespectful foul language vulgar insults insulting the staff jobs terrorizing the staff physically lurching towards them, threatening to pick one of them up and physically move them away from the gate. And um, so at that point, well, before that point, our um, adult supervisors called, fortunately living very close by, got on scene and got all the staff and minors locked in the gatehouse, into the boat, into the gatehouse. And the police were immediately called. Um, at which point um, Lisa and I were called to and we made it down there. The first guest that was the most hostile had left, which we saw him speeding down the road. And the uh, second guest was still there and we spoke to him just uh, lightly. He was very um, easy to get along with. And um, so we just want to see um, primarily, you know, are we able to, you know, really enforce the rules and I mean, we're concerned about keeping our staff safe. If they're afraid to go to work, who am I going to have working there? You know, how am I going to, because in the deed, we need to keep it policed. We need to keep it sanitary. We, we don't even have very strict rules. Plenty of fair warning. Um, any questions? Sherry has a question. Yeah. Um, there was no adult in there. They had to call an adult in. We had a 14-year-old. So we didn't have an adult supervisor full-time until of last year on the payroll staff. It was never expected before. Oh, you had, a, you had what, a 17-year-old? 17-year-old and a 14 year old She's the assistant old. supervisor. She's the assistant yes, supervisor. Yes, she's an assistant. We have, this year we hired three assistant supervisors, and then we have an adult supervisor. We have more supervision than we've had in the past. This is her third year at the lake. Um, so, um, I, and I, I agree with you, Sherry. We don't have the, necessarily have the budget to pay an adult to be there all the time because it is, you know, it's not the same rate of pay. I, I think that um, that's, a big, that's a big thing, and we, we push for that. They've got more supervision than they've had in the past. But the, the, the question is, is that, yes, you have, you, you are acting as employees and agents of the town. You're, in, you're, you're there in charge of it. If somebody's breaking the rules, then by all means, you call the police, or you ask them to leave, or you call the police. Um, for instance, I was told that somebody was down there smoking dope and, and thought that was okay. Well, they're not in Massachusetts. So, I mean, or someone else was smoking and giving kids a hard time about... The openingly like, drinking alcohol and, and openly visible drinking beer cans. That was, yeah. that was a big one, too. Um, and that's, you know, that's something, hey, you can't do that here. And if not, you just go and pick up the phone and say, send a cruiser right away up here. You know, we got somebody that's a problem, they're drinking, they're not supposed to. And, I mean... Um, yeah, the kids shouldn't be putting themselves in The kids way. are not to be put, and I understand, and I, that was one of my concerns, is putting young kids in there to dealing with either older older teenagers or uh, young adults or uh, older adults to bully them. But until we can figure out a way to get the budget to have a full-time adult there, I mean, we're kind of stuck. But they got senior kids in their late teens. Third year working there. Yeah, so they're... Um, 
think she's we have to go with that. The, the other thing I have it's no difference than having one run in a store by right. themselves. You don't have an adult that's there, you know, and these things are happening. Then, and what's the other deal that? You don't have people, you don't have an adult there to take money in because I thought anyone taking money in had to be 18 years of age or older. No, there's nothing no. in there for that. But I mean, we have an adult that lives a couple doors right down the street, the spitting distance from the place. There's nothing. No. I don't think so. No. 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 I'm 100 percent behind the policing thing of yeah. of, oh, yeah. of of whatever you, whatever the staff says goes. I mean, like yeah. said, like Jack said, they're representing us. Yeah. Uh, the the t you know the town. Um, they're the town representative. They're, they're the eyes in the air. They know what's happening uh, right there. Part of it is, is, you know, having to call somebody else to turn around and say, do we have the authority to arrest? Yeah. You know, right. that's that. I mean, number one, if if they're told by someone in charge at the park, the police are told that they were asked to leave and they're not leaving and they're still there, then yes, by all means, number one, the, it's town property. The town, the, the police right. have all the authority in the world without having to get any special permission to, to arrest them. So I think I mean, it was more of a discussion of a no trespass. Yeah, and it's it is trespassing. If you're asked to anybody, if you somebody goes on your property and you're asked to leave by somebody who has care, custody, and control of that spot to leave, and they don't. It's then trespass, whether it's a sign or not. It's so still it was trespassing. The, the asking to leave, but then it's kind of future, a no trespassing, meaning not welcome back, kind of ever. If or you at want all, them, to, if, I think of. if you want somebody to be banned from there, then mm -hmm. that's a different conversation. I okay. think at that point you'd have to get number. get their name and Which we, we did and plate number, and then turn around and submit it to the town, and they will get a letter in writing saying they are not allowed on the property. Okay, because we did this with this instance. Mm -hmm. When the police did come and interview uh, the staff and talk to everybody and listen to the statements, um, Officer Frisbee had explained all of the options, and a no trespassing order was an option. Yeah, and, at that um, point, they're not to come back. They're banned correct. from the And we did, we did say, yes, we'd like to do that option, and he did serve it verbally to the one, okay. one guest. Even though two guests were there, we only felt one guest actually got to that situation well i think in that point then i mean to make sure that there's something here in writing in the town and the town office so if somebody calls here yes it's on record, it's on record and the other thing is they have a rec written record of it in that gate yeah. gatehouse so if they come in no you're not allowed okay. period because i think uh, to a because everybody could say verbal you know i right. didn't get anything like that you know now it's in writing was it was it delivered Verbally, it was delivered that evening. I heard secondhand. I did not hear from the police officer. We can check. It, it was check. delivered verbally to that person oh. by the officer. Okay. I want to make um, sure we get it firsthand, get it in writing. So verbally the, doesn't amount to anything. If the police anything, station place knew, too, as well, because I think that was one of the questions, was the officer was not sure who had the authority to give a no trespassing order because it is town property. And um, we weren't sure if the director, being a town employee, you know, was was and that's why I was called. Make sure, yes. Yep. And I said no trespass. I was the one who said it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I would agree with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And exactly. in that instance, to turn around and put to terrorize the the, the staff down there, and including adults to, mm -hmm. to use the language oh. and carry on, then yeah, and, and you know at that point it's out. I think the director and the chair ought to have the ability, if uh, just if anything, just to clarify, to trespass somebody well it's a trespass it's to ban them i mean to, uh, to ban them i mean the, the trespass is when they show up again but at that point they're not to come back they're not welcome yeah, giving the no but, trespassing order makes them banned so but if they at do that come point back, you also have to submit the name and the information at least here to the office okay. and get it to naomi so we can have and get it we can do something in writing and have it yeah. signed, i'm just, I'm just thinking in in the case I mean, where naomi may not be reachable one of one of the Only two, either the give chair. Up the phone. Yeah, I have to give up the phone, or I mean, or any of us that are on, so on the board at this point. It could, it could even be two of us. I mean, the, like if. But the, the thing is, is your other, your other, you the other, you're the uh, person on the street right there with the boots on the ground at that situ at that right. situation, and if that's what you think it warrants, then it's you know you have that um, ability to do that as acting as an agent for the town. So okay. yeah, that's part of your job. Yeah. What about maybe having the police up there at? Seven o'clock at night. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. We spoke to um, the it was Officer Shress and Officer Frisbee that evening that I and I think they do have tend to have some evening shifts and they were um, I wasn't there but they were going to try to the next night come you know because they knew the time of 
frame that, that the incident happened. Mm -hmm. and, and they did explain to us with the short shifts and the short staff that yeah. they do try and um, and uh, it's not guaranteed. That's what one I'm of saying. one oh, of our like, current I mean, employees this... did say that they, they do come in and they do well, come in. Well, hopefully this they weekend can, they do a little bit more with the fourth. So yeah, this but, is gonna be um, crazy. We're, we are um, put in for a police detail for the fourth of July. We, okay. we did that last year. It worked. Wonderful. Okay. Well, that's good if you can yeah, get that somebody. Works. It yeah. really, really helped on the fourth. We're hope we're hoping it's 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 short staffed everywhere. So. Yep. Anybody knows anybody? Put in a good word if somebody needs an extra shift on the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So that was really um, our things on the list. Other than we would like to propose a new hire of a lifeguard that okay. applied which we were very yeah, well, excited I about. I can talk a little bit about, I think, the we'll basics non, if you want to. We'll have a non-public here at the end of the sun. And we'll can you stay? For can you stay? Okay. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Anything else as far as the back goes? I'm good there. Okay, well, we'll do the, do the manifest. Well, yeah, we have uh, other So, pieces. Naomi, yes. I can email you the information. Unless uh, you I have it. I already got it. For the written? Yeah, I got it. Okay, I get the manifest and then we'll go on other business. Is there enough signatures? Cause I yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ricky's got it, it covered. Oh, the box is here. I'm yeah. like, I box didn't see it upstairs. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, a manifest. Okay. To order the treasurer to sign the payroll and accounts payable checks dated July 2nd, 2020 is included in the following manifest. Payroll manifest for $69,839.25. That's the weekly and FIA monthly payroll. First responder stipend manifest for $7,075.86. Accounts payable manifest for $102,364.46. Supplemental accounts payable manifest for $911,500.00 for a total of $1,090,000. $1,079.57. The following manifests were previously ordered to sign at the June 15, 2020 Board of Selectmen's meeting. The payroll manifest for $61,370.93. That's the weekly and monthly payroll checks dated 625 of 2020. First responder stipend manifest for $7,106.51. The stipend checks dated 625, 2020. And accounts payable manifest uh, for sixty-one thousand five hundred and forty-four dollars and eleven cents for checks dated six twenty-five of twenty twenty. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay. That's it. Uh, just some of the, the excavation permit for Tebow is here. That needs oh. all five of you. You guys gave the one-year extension. Yep. Okay. Really? Right. Ricky's got it. Right. Do we do move that or we already did? We already did. Yeah, I um, thought so. Yeah, yeah, we did it in May. And just because of the whole thing, we can't send anyone out, so we extended it for a year. Yeah. Uh, the only other, um, uh, you guys all, I guess we're talking about correspondence and then we can have a non public. Um, you all probably received, John and I talked in earlier today, um, a right to know request from Christopher Mann. I didn't get it. Uh, this was a John couple days ago. John forwarded to me on Saturday. It was a couple yeah. days ago we got it. Yeah, yeah, I never got it. So. Friday, I think. Yeah. He forwarded it to me Saturday morning. I get I that, so I'll share it. Yeah. So, what I, um, I can just explain. Um, so, what had happened is I received a right to know request back in May. The right to know request, what to me was a little, um, he's working on, uh, he said, good morning, I'm working on a project. I'm working on a project and been asked to do some research into Chase Park, its history and development. Would it be possible to get copies of the Chase Park Horse Lake lease and any worn articles that pertain to Chase Park, anything and everything? So I wrote back to him and explained to him that um, Chase Park was established in 1911. So that's 109 years of town reports you want me to go through. Which, um, so I said it was going to take quite a while. Um, and evidently quite a while. I'm supposed to give him a specified amount of time. So, um, and then he evidently wrote to you 
and forwarded only some of it, you didn't know that he was looking for 109 years worth of town warrant stuff. So um, I did call Laura and ask, because what's excessive? Uh, I think it's having you pay me, but not to sit and look at 109 years worth of town reports. So I have a question, and this is for the people who have been doing this a hell of a lot longer than I have. The 91A request is a request for information that is typically not available to the public. Is that correct? No, it's available. I think they're asking us to provide it. They're asking you to do research on their behalf. Mm -hmm. That seems... Well, if this information is publicly it's available excessive. at the state library or something like that, yeah. if it was a couple, then I think it's okay. But we're talking 109 years. 109 years. Some of that, 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 that's a research person. Some of that's available. Well, it starts, the, year. the whole conversation starts cool. about he's doing a research project, yeah. but he's looking for my help. So, so I did So I did call Laura. Is he going to pay you as the research? Laura assistant? said, write to no request doesn't mean that you have to do the research or I have to do the research. We can, provide, if, if I provide can find out what years we have town reports for in the um, the library in the law in the vault oh. here, um, then we can sit him down. He can go through them all himself. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, it's not meant for me to do it or for right. our staff to do it. Um, we can do the lease and stuff, but as far as that, I just have to check with. I don't know how many years we have of town reports, but I did call the state library because every year by law we're tur we have to turn in a copy of our town yep. report. So the gentleman was kind enough to go and find out that they have from 1839 to 2020. <laughs> wow. In, so the, cool. in the state of New Hampshire so, that's pretty cool. library. There you go. So if we don't have them, I can, Laura said, if we don't have them here, I could direct him. But typically they like to come here, but that's not meant for us to do the research. Right. Yeah. Welcome to sit him down. He'll have to make the appointment because that's honestly the clerk's records. If it was just a few, I, I'd say let's do it. Just it's as a favor to the town resident that's not a problem right but that, this is years excessive worth. but yeah. i mean the other Which, thing is if it's readily available at the town of uh, the state library he could go well, there and we, do if the he research doesn't want to go to concord yeah he, well we can do it here but if we only have 1930 but, forward we can yeah. explain to him that he could go to concord for the others yeah, right but if he wants to sit down and make an appointment he can come physically himself and go year by year through the town report for the town warrants yep. it's nothing i have to do she said Yep. So I think that's the answer that he's going to have. But the, the thing wasn't turned over to the town until 1911. Right, but he wants any and all warrant articles. Right, dealing with it. So it would be from 1911 on. Right, yeah. but 1940, again. 1940 is when they turned it over to the town. But right, oh, it was 1940. established in 11. But that's still reading through 109 years worth of warrant articles. And that's, yeah, a, yeah I mean. <laughs> I think you're yeah. not the research assistant, you know. You know, right. you like get paid to do a job by the town so Yeah, keep it close eye. You can yeah, provide just, them. I'll, Laura guided me and ability. said to find out how many years we have here. Explain to him that as far as looking up the Warren articles, we have town reports from whatever year to now. Um, the clerk has him. He has to arrange his research through there, and he's welcome. Yeah, he, to he's welcome to, to welcome to the information. It's just yeah. we, we yeah, can't you, pay you to sit there and yeah. research and, that many and, years and, worth. And, uh, and I mean, and you wouldn't. Karen's anyway. working on a project for me in between. Is cleaning out those file cabinets, and she happened to get through C, so I have four Chase Park ones. So we might find out some more information there too, mm -hmm. which we can do. She found those on Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but I'll respond to him. But that's exactly why. I said it's going to take a while. We hadn't even gone back to a normal schedule here. We were still tag-teaming it. So mm -hmm. I'll be happy to reply, but it wasn't that I wasn't ignoring him. There was an excessive amount of information that was asked for. Yeah. Okay. So, but now I have guidance on that. Sounds good. Um, I will forward you. I spent Saturday having several emails sent to me from Riverdale um, about trucking on Saturday and the quality of life. Um, down there and they followed them the dump trucks to the job site so I'll just forward them all to you I didn't yet they came on Saturday there was um right there at the end of Riverdale mm -hmm. um, she she has she can't she complains once before she sent us the pictures in the dark um. Yeah, I'm not going to say the name, but um, well, they, she, she's they're concerned coming for the planning about the, you know, it's board. Saturday and I can't enjoy my household, oh. but there's trucks coming by. And so she, there was a requ request to know how much revenue we get from the gravel, how much revenue we get from the trucks. And I just, I'm not going to know who passed through there. Yeah. Again, it's a little bit frivolous I mean, for me to try to they, tag. Where are they coming by. from as far as gravel goes? Yeah, I know they were going to a young kid's house slot that's doing it on his own and doing it Saturday mornings. I mean, yeah. that's all they can do. Mm-hmm. Um, he's right to well, use the road. There's nothing. 
but I'll share There's them all nothing with that you. says that yeah, they sure. can't they can't truck on weekends. There's so. pictures and you can oh. see who it is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know other than you know I can write back to her and yeah. I'll be polite about it because I just don't know what trucks use the road. They all pay road tax. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and then we don't have any. There's, there's, no quiet time. there's no uh, quiet time in town. No, in there's no, and there's no restriction on trucks going. I mean, because that's the only way they can go in and out. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can't go down through Goffstown or down through New Boston on River, uh, Riverdale because of no through trucking. So that's the only way in and out. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just forward you. So if you get it, it's it okay. came on Saturday a couple different okay. times. So. Yeah. And then I think Janine has a non -public yeah, And public John public. wanted a no. Okay. Um, taken care of. Yeah, this is taken care of. Yeah. Oh, X. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If there's nothing else, is there anything else? Okay. Um, we're going to go into non-public, and I guess that would be under B. B. Um, make a motion to go into non-public under RSA 91A colon three Roman numeral two B. Second. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 And, yes. After? and after that, we uh, will be adjourning. Well, I would just like one under C. Okay, and then we'll have another one under C. Then we'll adjourn. Okay, then we adjourn. Then we'll adjourn. Then we'll adjourn. Thank you.